We finally have one mystery solved in the curious case of Republican Congressman and federal criminal defendant George Santos. The freshman from New York was indicted last month on 13 criminal counts, including wire fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, and lying to the House of Representatives. Santos pleaded not guilty to all charges and was released to go back to his job in Congress on a $500,000 bond. But he's refused to say exactly who paid to bail him out of jail. NBC News and other news organizations requested that the court make public the names of the bond guarantors. And the court did just that today. We now know that George Santos's father and his aunt paid the bond. According to court documents, Santos's father and aunt did not have to provide any money up front. It's unclear how they intend to pay the bond if Santos violates the terms of his bond. The New York Times reports Santos' father lives in New York and previously worked as a house painter. His aunt works as a mail handler for the Postal Service. And federal elections data shows that Santos' father and aunt both donated thousands to his congressional campaign. Here's what George Santos said about his family's ability to pay the bond. She's a little that's, that's actually that's exactly that's exactly the reason that I chose to keep their identity secure. My dad's an honest working man, as is my mom. If known liar George Santos believes his father is quote an honest working man, how would he define himself? House Republicans continue to support George Santos, however. They voted to block a resolution to expel Santos from Congress last month and instead sent the issue to the House Ethics Committee. But yesterday, all Republicans linked arms with George Santos to do Donald Trump's bidding. The Republican House voted along party lines to censure Congressman Adam Schiff for his role in investigating Donald Trump. Congressman Schiff said this about the censure. To my Republican colleagues who introduced this resolution, I thank you. You honor me with your enmity. You flatter me with this falsehood. You who are the authors of a big lie about the last election must condemn the truth tellers and I stand proudly before you. Your words tell me that I have been effective in the defense of our democracy. Speaker McCarthy chooses to occupy the resources of Congress for two straight weeks on this hollow sop to the MAGA crowd. McCarthy would spend the nation's time on petty political payback, thinking he can censure or fine Trump's opposition into submission. But I will not yield. Not one inch. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Robert Garcia of California. He is a member of the House Oversight Committee and House Homeland Security Committee. Last month, he introduced the resolution to expel George Santos from Congress. Congressman Garcia, thank you for very much for being here. Congressman Santos is voting to censure Congressman Adam Schiff for investigating Donald Trump. Two of those people are federal criminal defendants, and the other is Adam Schiff. And, and crazy. I mean, this, the whole thing is just totally insane. I mean, obviously, George Santos is uh, a complete fraud and a liar. Uh, he should have been expelled from the Congress. I mean, just moving this to the Ethics Committee on Santos has been a total joke. And, and quite frankly, Kevin McCarthy has given away the keys uh, to folks that are literally have no sort of sense of policy or ethics like George Santos and like Marjorie Taylor Greene. And instead, they're trying to attack Adam Schiff. I mean, uh, Congressman Schiff is someone that always stands for truth, for justice took on Donald Trump, the biggest con man to ever be uh, the president. Uh, and now here we are trying to deal with this really a waste of time on Congressman Schiff, where we should be focused on removing George Santos from Congress. And so Republicans sent the Santos case to the Ethics Committee. Today, the committee said it had issued more than 30 subpoenas. What's your take on the ethics investigation of Santos? I mean, look, I don't trust anything that Kevin McCarthy does. I mean, uh, McCarthy has tried to protect Santos this entire time. He got his caucus united to ensure that he wasn't expelled. Uh, we've asked uh, the speaker multiple occasions to give us a timeline, at least, in the Ethics Committee. Um, that hasn't been done. And so we have no confidence that Kevin McCarthy is actually going to do anything with George Santos. George Santos 
is the biggest fraud to serve in Congress, and he should be removed. He has access to classified information. He has access to our nation's secrets, and he's yet lied about everything about his life. I mean, the people back in his district elected essentially a complete fabrication. And so um, he should not be in Congress. And it's really shameful that Kevin McCarthy continues to support him. Uh, Congressman Garcia, let's listen to what happened on the House floor after the vote to censure Congressman Adam Schiff. The yeas are 213 and the nays are 209, with six answering present. The resolution adopted. Without objection, the motion to consider is laid on the table. House will be in order. So, Congressman, the Republican bet is that they can make serious consequences like censure and impeachment seem like just politics, something the party in power does to the party not in power. But do you think anyone other than MAGA voters will fall for it? I mean, look, I think that um, the country generally is growing tired of this Republican majority who absolutely do nothing for the American people. Uh, the folks that are leading the modern Republican Party are Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, and George Santos. And I think that is not appealing to a vast majority of Americans who actually just want us to get to work. We should be very concerned that a serial fraudster like George Santos serves every single day in the Congress and has an equal vote of everyone else in the Congress. Regardless of what happened with the bail today, I think there's a lot of questions that, have, that are really unanswered, uh, like exactly how were his family able to pay that bail amount? I think that's a fair question. That's a question that should be answered. And so he has a lot to account for. How can you actually already admit to a crime, which he has in Brazil, he's admitted to, to actually defrauding folks and still serving the Congress. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is time right now to bring that resolution back forward and to expel George Santos from Congress. One more qu quick question for you. Um, has Speaker McCarthy then lost control of his conference, do you think, this week? I think he lost his control of the conference a few weeks ago. I mean, and not only did he lose the, the control, I mean, he gave the keys away to the most extreme MAGA Republicans in his entire conference. He has no control of his caucus. He can barely control the extreme fringes. And, you know, we'll see how long, how long he lasts or how long that extreme fringe actually gives him the power to do so. Uh, Speaker McCarthy has no leverage over this caucus, and they've gone completely over the rails. Walk us through all the questions you have about the Alito scandal. So the scandal we need to understand better, and we need to get real answers, just the way we need to get real answers from Clarence Thomas. Uh, but the excuses that Alito made are so preposterous that they're almost incriminating themselves. Hmm. This business that an airplane is a facility I mean, Jonathan, how many times have we traveled on planes, and has anybody ever called it a facility? And by looking at a plane as a mm -hmm. facility, not the hangar, not the airport, but the plane as a facility, he steered everybody away from the actual text of the actual personal hospitality rule, which limits it to food, lodging, and entertainment. That's pretty <laughs> dispositive. It's not allowed to count jet travel as personal hospitality, even if you call a jet a facility. And he goes on to fuss about his hotel room being not nice enough. You're on a fishing trip, for Pete's sake. The hotel room isn't the, the point. And this business of him getting advice, you know, there's actually a committee within the judiciary made up of other judges. It's called the Financial Disclosure Committee of the Judicial Conference. It's there specifically to answer questions about what is required and not required for financial disclosure. Why don't the Supreme Court justices go there instead of listening to this nebulous advice from unidentified people? It's a real mess, and the excuses, I think, made it worse. Wow. So Dahlia Lithwick writes today, quote, we keep centering the justices and their ethics misfires at the expense of the real grifting here. Billionaires being assigned like something out of the Big Brothers program to individual justices for the purposes of lavish gift giving and influence. It is a big game safari for access to powerful people. Thomas and Alito want to behave like Republican politicians, but cry foul when the court is accused of being political? Well, I think you have to look 
um, not just at Thomas and Alito. They've got their ethics problems, and we're going to get to the bottom of those. But behind all that is this group of creepy right-wing billionaires who are meddling in the Supreme Court. They're meddling with these lavish gifts of secret private jet holidays. They're meddling by funding the Federalist Society, while the Federalist Society was putting together the list off of which these justices were chosen. They likely funded the Judicial Crisis Network with anonymous money when it was running the ads for all these justices. And they're behind a whole array of front group uh, amici curiae, friends of the court, who filed briefs and coordinated flotillas without disclosing who's behind them, hidden by dark money. So the role of these right-wing billionaires extends throughout the judicial selection process, the judicial nomination process, the actual argument in the courtroom, and now we find out these appalling, undisclosed, uh, repeated gifts. Well, S Senator Whitehouse, the hub of all of that activity is a man by the name of Leonard Leo. I mean, he's the one who organized the trip with Justice, with Justice Alito and Paul Singer. He's quickly uh, becoming a, a larger household name. He's a household name in, in conservative circles. Is, is there a way to curb what he does? Yes, but first we have to understand it. So we need to ask questions about things like, the contract of his public relations company with Justice Thomas. So that when Justice Thomas sells his book, or when Leonard Leo perhaps organizes billionaires to buy a thousand copies of his book, the royalties go straight into Justice Thomas's pocket. Nobody's looked at that yet. We need to understand that deal and what has resulted from it. We need to understand how it is that Leonard Leo got into that painting <laughs> with Harlan Crow mm -hmm. and with Justice Thomas. Um, th there's an operation that is going on here. We've seen a couple of flashes of evidence about it, but we really need to have a complete understanding of it. And at the moment, it's the Chief Justice who is obstructing the investigation. Mm -hmm. you, you know, Senator, can we talk about Chief Justice John Roberts? Are you surprised? Um, that there hasn't been any internal effort led by him um, to speak against this behavior or to actually do something, show the American people that he's doing something to, to curb this behavior. Absolutely. When the Dobbs opinion leaked and when the right-wing Federalist Society judges thought that this was done or wanted to pretend that this had been done by the liberals, Boom. What do you get? An instant investigation. Now, they made a botch of it because they didn't know what they were doing, but at least they realized that this was something that needs investigation. Here's a really simple question. What did Justice Thomas know about his wife's insurrection activities when he decided not to recuse himself from the January 6th case? It's a really simple factual question, and it hinges uh, on that fact, hinges the question of whether his failure to recuse was illegal a violation of law. And that question has never been officially asked mm. of Justice Thomas. Nobody went and sat down with him and said, sorry, Your Honor, this is going to be you know, a little bit awkward for a minute, but we got to get a statement from you. Tell me what you knew and tell me when you knew it. And by the way, this statement is being recorded. So if it's a false statement, there will be consequences. Senator Whitehouse, let me get you on one more thing real quickly. The Senate Judiciary, Judiciary Committee will vote on your ethics reform bill after the July 4th recess. But Senator uh, Mitch McConnell, the minority leader, has vowed to block its passage in the Senate. If that does, does indeed happen, what can be done to reform the court if Republicans don't get on board? Well, I think, first of all, continued public pressure and concern is really, really important. Uh, second, we've got an election coming up. And if the Republicans want to run for election on the fact that they've covered up an investigation into billionaires who are giving quarter million dollar vacations secretly to Supreme Court justices, that's not going to be a good look for them. But I think most of all, that body I was talking about, the judicial conference, that is made up of other judges, not Supreme Court justices. It only has one Supreme Court justice on it, and that's the chief who chairs it. All of the others are regular judges who know that what the Supreme Court justices have been doing is wrong, who know that what they've been saying about it is ridiculous, and who resent 
the imputation that they might be doing the same thing. Hmm. They're not. Nobody else is doing this stuff. This is a uniquely bad behavior confined to the justices of the Supreme Court, and it needs to be investigated, and it needs to end.